Yesterday we were getting lamb ready for oilseed rape. Now we're getting drill ready. So we've got these little bags of microgranules. So it's basically fertilizer mashed up really small. We put it right next to the seed through the drill. And one of the hoppers on the middle hopper, actually, the front hopper's gonna be full of oilseed rape. So Andrew's just cleaning the drill out now because it had some fun wheat in it last. Changing the right rollers so that it meters it the right amount. And then we're gonna go drill some oilseed rape in a bit. Wagons of rape everywhere, one going out, one coming in. Just been up here, sprayed this field off now. It's what we call a tip field because that used to be the coal tip for the coal mine that used to be there. Then they sort of built house on it over the last 10 years. Anyway, we're going to go into that one now, and this one is going to be oilseed rape as well. So I've just sprayed it off. A um, little bit of straw covering bits and places. Just going to do a half inch of, of chit to get it a bit blacker. And then that will be drilled with rape this afternoon, hopefully, along with that one there. Just found it. A horse brush in the field must have come in the muck sometime when we spread muck, but it's quite handy for cleaning the, uh, the heat exchanger on the boiler, so I'm going to pick it up. Although we've had rain, you can still see the cracks in the soil, which is good. So that means we don't need to do any deep loosening. We're literally just going to scratch the top with a disc just to distribute some of this chaff a bit different, get a nice black soil. Rob's uh, discing on the 936, and he's been messing around with that silent thing. I don't know if you can hear it. It's hardly using any fuel that tractor, some tick over, just pulling them. So yeah, just, just rough the top up slightly, like you say, get it black. Job done. If it hadn't have been so dry, we would have done this about two weeks ago as soon as the combine left the field and the, well, the straw rake after we bailed it. But it was just it just wouldn't have done anything. The disc had just bounced along the top, made loads of dust. Anyway, it's nice and moist now, so it's doing a nice decent job and not using a lot of fuel either. But if we'd have done that, we'd have got like what we call a stale seabed. So we'd have got all the little weed seeds to germinate quicker. The straw rake did do a little bit of that job, but not quite as much as the disc might have done. But it's just the way they were. You have to just got to farm with the weather conditions every year. But luckily we've got moisture. Some people haven't. Some people didn't get that rain at all over the last few days. So we'll just keep going anyway. Something for the John Deere fans. Adam's got some new air on the top of his 250. Andrew's just swapping the metering system now because we're using microgranule fertilizer now, not the big stuff. He's just going to change it to a smaller wheel. More space food for the oilseed rape. Some of this Umo start stuff. Hope it works. Guy from Spun Hill who's delivered just said to check out is it Cathal O'Donohan from West Cork Island? He does a lot of drone videos of silage making, so I've, he's just been showing me that on his phone, so check it out. This start of it coming in 10 kilo bags isn't much fun. It's took us, it took us 40 minutes nearly to put enough in. Going retro today, we've got the 7.7 on a grain trailer in a minute. You need to take the discs off. Just making sure we're getting the depth into a little bit of moisture, but not too deep. Drilling rape now and the fertilizer at the same time. Right, this is today's quiz question. If you had to go karting for the day, would it be on the Black 936 or the 7710? Or the Fast Track? Let me know in the comments. Rich is there with the, one of Bill and Joe's Baileys on the 77. This field, you know, the tank's full from one end to the other, which is good. Which means that we always need a trailer in the field, meeting the top combine in each row, because I can't go up and down. So it's quite uh, labour hungry cutting this field if it means so long. If we cut it the other way, we'll be bouncing over the tram lines. Really, you need a chaser bin, which is like a big hopper with an auger on, and then that holds about 30 tonne and just stays with the combine. And when the trailers get back to the field, it shoots over, fills them up in about five minutes. They don't have to wait for the second tank full. They're straight back on the road again. I was going to try and hire one this season if we'd have got that quad track. But, um, can't afford it, it's meant to fertiliser. Oh, by the way, these are back in stock. So, you want to check them out later on the website. There's not many though, because I'm not, like I say, I'm not buying huge orders. They might start being cold again, especially the t-shirts. Oh, and the hoodies are as well. Yeah, uh, this colour hoodie is back in stock as well, and there's three XLs, or two XLs. The way you can see, it's a bit black here. So this stuff, is quite wet ground, but it's sandy wet ground. So you didn't get the best of starts, and then, 
and then it come really dry and died and the pigeons moved into that bit there and hollowed it out and we can see there these like hollows so not the best of yields here but over this side it's doing all right it's doing about 10 tons of the eight to the hectare but this you know seven and a half it'll drop right off when i do cut the next pass because the pigeons have demolished it This is a bit here that the pigeons were landing in and flattening because it was a little bit thin because it flooded and they just finished the rest off really. Well the good news is they've been had a real concerted effort shooting pigeons over the last sort of three, three and a half weeks. They shot 11,000 pigeons so hopefully it might make growing rate a little bit easier but there are still huge numbers coming in as well so there's obviously millions of them oh it's just falling out there so today has been a pretty hectic day i wanted to get a lot of oilseed rate drilled andrew's done well to be honest he's drilled nearly 40 hectares which is uh quick maths uh, 100 acres really isn't it no hold on is that correct yeah 100 acres on his own and he's now going to drop the drill off and go and roll it which is amazing uh sam's been getting the sun pellets already but he had a slight hitch with that because uh, the magnet on the back of the chipper fell and dropped onto the belt, jammed the belt, blocked all that up. So him and Dave have been trying to unblock that. Uh, what else has gone wrong? Oh, the 936 has thrown a fault. It's back, but it's still doing that funny fault on the injectors, like where it misses slightly. And there's a fault code on it now, but that might just be fuel filter, so it might not be too hectic. Uh, Anna was going to try and come and look at some flowers at uh, 7 o'clock this morning. She couldn't get here. I think she's on her way now, but I'm miles away in a wheat field so it's going to be a bit of a chatting on the phone sorting that out um something else gone wrong can't remember what it was oh we want this we want some of this wheat off this field for seed but it's coming off at about 20 percent moisture which is quite wet so we have to dry it but we want to keep it clean so we're gonna have to sort of like work out where we can put it on trailers to keep it to one side clean the dryer out put it through then put it back on trailers and then find someone to store it before it's to be seen so it's just been a bit of a hectic day doing all that. I thought it'd be a lot drier. It started off a nice day this morning, but it's just not bright at all, which is a bit of a shame. Looks like the tide is out. It's uh, lots of sand. Wouldn't it be good if you could dry that and farm it? There must be thousands of acres there. I think if we were in Holland or Dubai, they would actually do that. They just drain it all make a channel for the sea for, for the river and the sea, sea wet out and just make more land whether it be for people to live on whether it be to farm whichever they, they just get on with it don't they i think is there a floating dairy in holland in the sea uh, i remember boris wanted to do a floating airport in the thames which made sense because rather than build on land that they could use for farm farming or put houses on or whatever they the idea was drain drain the river and do it in the middle of that or you know like a float like i say a floating out like a huge boat we should make use of these wasted sort of estuaries, I think. Rob's off on Black Beauty with another load now. Hear him play with his siren again. Yeah, while I've been cutting, Sam has mounted the slug pellets on the back of the corvus. There's a picture of it here. So the slug pellets we use are like pasta, so they're safe for everything but slugs. But if it comes wet and damp over the weekend, the slugs will just demolish that rapier as it pokes his little head out of the ground. We're just going to put like a little dose, a couple of kilos to the hectare of slug pellets on, so we'll probably get on with that tomorrow. That is probably about it for today. I'm now filling the silage trainer because, like I say, I want to do the seed. So we're going to fill that up so we can park it up and then sort that out and slowly dry it because if you dry it too hot, it'll damage the germination of it. Seven, seven, eight. So, yeah, thanks for watching. It's going to be a digital outro. I'm going to try and do it now while I'm still on this long straight field. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Don't forget if you made it this far, click like. And don't forget, follow me on TikTok, Agri Contract, Ollie Vlogs.